in order to make some of the concepts of my student clear, I have decided to do an example of quantum circuit. In this example, we have asked five different questions. First question is that make a reverse circuit of this circuit. And second question is that write output of this circuit. Uh, that is easy, we have done it multiple times already. And uh, third question says that uh, write a complete circuit as a unitary matrix. So we want to write a unitary matrix corresponding to this circuit because the circuit is made of all unitary matrices. So it's this whole circuit is reversible and can be represented as a unitary matrix. Uh, part four says that write a reverse circuit as a unitary matrix. So we also have to write the reverse circuit as a unitary matrix. And part uh, fifth say, the last E part says that compute output uh, of uh, this circuit using a unitary matrix. So now let's do part A. In part A, we have to make reverse circuit. Uh, in order to make reverse circuit, uh, we, have, we have to do two different things. Number one, uh, we have to uh, do conjugate transpose of each gate. Because unitary matrix, if you have to find inverse of unitary matrix, then inverse of unitary matrix is equal to its conjugate transpose. Therefore, for each of these gates, uh, we have to do conjugate transpose. However, most of those gates are Hermitian gates. So in Hermitian gates, uh, we have that uh, for Hermitian, uh, conjugate transpose is equal to the same matrix. So Hermitian matrices are symmetric matrices. Uh, in this case, we have Hadamard gates, uh, which are Hermitian gates. So Hadamard gates is Hermitian gate. Uh, we have poly Z gate, which is a Hermitian gate. So we don't have to take conjugate transpose because its conjugate transpose is equal to itself. Similarly, poly X gate is a Hermitian gate. Uh, C naught gate is a Hermitian gate. So the only gate which is not Hermitian gate is this rotation gate. So we only have to take conjugate transpose of the rotation gate because all other gates are uh, Hermitian gates. So now in this part, uh, we will make a reverse circuit and we'll also take conjugate transpose of each gate. So our reverse circuit will looks like this. We first have gate X. This is conjugate transpose of gate X, which is equals to gate X. And then we have gate Z or conjugate transpose of gate Z. And then we have a rotation by angle 90. And we do conjugate transpose of rotation gate because this gate is not Hermitian. And we do C naught. C naught gate is also uh, Hermitian gate and then we do Hadamard gate and Hadamard gate is also uh, Hermitian gate so we don't have to take conjugate transpose here and that's it. So this circuit is a reverse circuit. It implies that if I uh, start from this circuit uh, let's say this is a, a non-reverse circuit and I start with this circuit and I give this circuit uh, input of cat 0, uh, cat 1 and cat 0 and then I uh, give the output to the reverse circuit. So I give the output to the reverse circuit and my output, uh, final output of the reverse circuit will be once again cat 0, cat 1 and cat 0 because these uh, two circuits uh, will cancel each other and act like an identity circuit. So we have, so the input will be equal to the output. So we are done with the first part. Now do the second part, which says that what will be the output of this circuit. So let's calculate the output quickly. There are there are multiple ways to compute output of the circuit. Uh, we can either use Dirac notation which is always faster and we can also use matrices which is always slower because we, do, we have to do lots of calculations. So I'm going to use a uh, Dirac notation to calculate the output quickly. I have divided the circuit in different stages. So this is my stage one, stage two, stage three and stage four and I will uh, show what will be the outcome at each stage. So outcome of the first stage is, uh, this is part B is um, cat psi 1 and cat psi 1 will be equals to cat 0, 
cat1 and cat0 uh, for the second stage outcome will be cat psi 2 and cat psi 2 will be that I will apply Hadamard gate on the first two registers by keeping the last register untouched and there are different ways to apply Hadamard gate I am going to use uh, the method that I think is the fastest so uh, when I apply Hadamard on cat 0 my answer will be cat 0 plus cat 1 divided by square root of 2 when I apply Hadamard on cat1, my answer will be cat0 minus cat1 divided by square root of 2. And the last register is uh, remains cat0. And now I can simplify this. So I will have uh, cat00 minus cat01 uh, plus cat10 uh, and uh, minus cat11. And this whole will be divided by uh, 2 and times cat 0 I can simplify it further I will have cat 0 0 0 minus cat 0 1 0 plus cat 1 0 0 minus cat 1 1 0 and this is divided by 2 so I'm done with uh, cat psi 2 so now I want to do cat psi uh, cat psi 3 in cat psi 3 I have to apply rotation gate on the uh, uh, first qubit and I have to apply C node, C node gate on the uh, second and third qubit. So I will first apply rotation gate. So I will going to do uh, maybe this is not uh, cat psi 3 yet. I will call it cat psi 3 bar. In cat psi 3 bar I will apply uh, rotation 90 on uh, cat psi 2. And then I will apply uh, C node gate then I will get uh, cat psi 3 at the end. So when I apply rotation of 90 degree on cat 0 then cat 0 uh, becomes cat 1 and when I apply rotation of 90 degree on cat 1 then cat 1 becomes cat 0 with a uh, negative amplitude. So I am going to use this fact quickly uh, we can verify this fact also so basically uh, uh, rotation for 90 degree implies that uh, I have here uh, cos 90 I have here minus sine 90 and I have here sine 90 and cos 90 and I know that cos 90 is equals to uh, 0 so I can write 0 here I know that sine 90 is 1 so I can write 1 here I know that uh, sine 90 is 1 so 1 and cos 90 is 0 and this is 0 and if, if I apply uh, this on uh, uh, cat1, so maybe cat0 first, cat0, then my answer will be equals to uh, uh, 0, 1. So cat0 is transformed into cat1. So I will use, I'm going to use the same transformation here that if I have cat0, I will transform dot cat0 to cat1 because of rotation by 90 degree. And it makes perfect sense because uh, we have angle of 90 degree between cat 0 and cat 1 if I rotate uh, cat 0 it will become cat 1 uh, similarly I apply this rotation gate on cat 1 so in this case I have here uh, cat 1 which is 0 1 and my answer going to be uh, minus 1 0 and this is equals to minus cat 0 so I'm going to apply this thing here that whenever I find uh, cat1 I'm going to change it to minus cat0. So my output of uh, uh, cat psi3 bar will be equals to uh, 1 0 0 minus 1 1 0 uh, minus uh, 0 0 0, 0 uh, plus uh, 0 1 0 divided by 2 and uh, in the next step I have to compute cat uh, psi 3 by applying the other gate which was C node gate and C node gate is quite easy to apply because in C node gate I have the second uh, bit as a control bit and whenever the control bit will be 1 then I will change I will flip the third bits 
So in this case, I will not flip the third bit because control bit is zero. In this case, I will flip the third bit because control bit is one. In this case, I will not flip the third bit because the control bit is zero. In this case, I will flip the third bit because the control bit is one. So my uh, final uh, uh, cat psi three is going to be uh, uh, one zero zero minus uh, one one one. I have flipped here, so I will flip here and I will flip here. So I will have here minus uh, zero zero zero, and finally I have uh, zero one one over us uh, over two. So I'm also done with uh, cat psi three. So I have to compute now cat psi four, and then I will have my final output of the circuit. I will be applying poly x gate on the uh, first qubit and I will apply poly z gate on the last qubit. Poly x gate uh, flip 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. And poly z gate uh, change a sign of qubit if the, that qubit is uh, cat 1. So I'm going to apply both of these gates simultaneously on uh, cat psi 3. So cat psi 4, I apply poly x gate on first qubit, my answer is 0. Uh, 0 0 I apply uh, I have to apply a uh, z gate and answer will remain 0 now I apply poly x gate on the first qubit I get 0 1 and because last uh, qubit is 1 and when I apply poly z gate on this qubit I get uh, um, my sign is switched from uh, plus minus to uh, plus Similarly, I apply poly x gate on first, I get 1, 0, 0, my sign will not switch because it is 0. And finally, I have uh, uh, 1, uh, 1, 1, and in this case, my sign will once again flip because last qubit uh, was 1 uh, divided by 2. And this is my final output of this circuit. And I can write this output also as a vector my vector will have uh, 1 at 0 location so it will have 1 at 0 location it will have 1 over 2 uh, maybe outside of it uh, 1 at 0 location then it will have 1 at 3rd location uh, 0 1 2 3rd location will have 1 4th location will have minus 1 and 5th location will have uh, and 7th location will have minus 1 so 0 1 2 3 4 uh, 5 6 7 so this is my output in, in a vector form. So I hope that uh, second step will be clear to you guys. Now let's do the third step. Third step is also very easy, but it takes lots of calculations. In the third part, uh, we are asked to uh, make a unity matrix for the whole circuit. So this uh, part takes lots of calculations, but before we do calculations, let's discuss basic concept. So I can first make matrix of each stage. Uh, let's say this is my stage one, this is my stage two, and this is my stage three. So I have three stages in the circuit. Each stage consists of some parallel uh, unitary gates. So I have some parallel unitary gates in the first stage, some parallel unitary gates in the second stage, and some parallel unitary gates in the third stage. I cannot call uh, this as a stage because it has it has some gates which are not parallel to each other so i can make a unitary matrix of stage one which was this one by taking tensor products of different gates so my result must be an eight into eight matrix because uh, uh, i have uh, three bits as input so uh, i will do hadamard gate tensor product with hadamard gate and I will uh, do the tensor product with identity gate. So in this line, there's nothing written. And when there's nothing written, then you can assume that there's identity matrix written here. There's identity gate written here. So we can add identity gate here, and we can add identity gate here. So uh, my result will be uh, eight by eight matrix for stage one. Similarly, for stage two, I will take um, um, a tensor product of uh, a rotation by 90 degree 
uh, with uh, C naught. In this case, I don't have to use uh, uh, identity matrix uh, because uh, here I have two by two matrix times two by two matrix times two by two matrix, and my result by result was eight by eight. Here in the second stage, I have two by two matrix uh, tensor product with four by four matrix, and my result will be once again eight by eight matrix. Uh, in this case, I don't have any wire empty. So for stage three, once again, now we are expert. I can take tensor product of poly x gate uh, with identity two by two identity because this wire was empty, and then I will take tensor product uh, with poly z gate, and I will once again have eight by eight matrix. So I have eight by eight matrix for each stage, and now to get final matrix of the whole circuit, I have to multiply these matrices. But question can be asked that in what order I have to multiply, because matrix multiplication is not commutative. I cannot use any arbitrary order. Can should I use this order at S one stage one, multiply by stage two, multiply by stage three, or should I use this order, stage three, multiply by stage two, multiply by stage one? What you guys think? Which order should I use? The answer to this question is that this is wrong order and this is correct order. It is because uh, when we apply uh, some operation on some vector, in this case our vector is this this input. So my operation has to be applied on this vector, which is uh, cat zero times cat one times cat zero. Then I keep that operation uh, that vector on the right hand side. So I have S one here. So first of all, S one uh, will um, uh, act on uh, this input, and I will have some output. Then on that output, I will apply S two, and then on th on that output, I will apply S three. Therefore, my order of multiplication must be S three times S two times S one. So this is the right order. So now. I'm ready for the computation. Let's compute unitary matrix quickly. So for part C, I first compute unitary matrix for stage one. Stage one matrix was recall it was Hadamard gate tensor product with Hadamard gate tensor product with identity. So I know that Hadamard uh, gate is uh, one 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 minus one, and I have one over square root two here. Similarly, second Hadamard gate is uh, one 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 minus one. I have one over square root of two here, and identity matrix is uh, one zero zero one. So I will apply uh, tensor product between these two. I my answer is going to be one over two, and here I will have uh, one 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 minus one, one 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 minus one, one 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 minus one. And minus one, minus one, minus one, one. So now I have to compute tensor product of uh, uh, two Hadamard gates with identity matrix. So in this case, in where, where, wherever I have one, I will have identity matrix there. So I will in case in case of this one, I will have whole identity matrix. In place of this one, I will have whole identity matrix. In place of minus one, I will have Uh, minus one zero zero minus one uh, instead of identity matrix. So I can just do this replacement quickly, and I will have matrix of stage uh, S one ready. So my matrix for stage uh, one is going to be uh, one over two. I am going to write very very small because I have to write eight by eight matrix here, but I will I promise to write correctly. So I will I will have here one zero zero one. Which is an identity matrix in place of this one. Similarly, in place of this one, I have one zero zero one. I'm done with this. In place of this one, I have one zero zero one. And and to avoid any mistake, I'm going to write uh, small braces here. Uh, you can assume those braces does not exist, but I'm writing them so that I don't make any mistake. And then for this one, I can write one zero zero one. And some some invisible 
uh, brackets here. Uh, similarly, for this one, I will have 1, 0, 0, 1. Oh. For this minus 1, I will have minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. For this one, I will have 1, 0, 0, 1. For this minus 1, I am going to have minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. For this one, I, I will have uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. For this one, I will have uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. And for this minus 1, I will have one, minus 1, minus 1, uh, 0, 0, minus 1. Almost made a mistake. For this minus 1, I will have uh, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And then I will have here uh, uh, 0, uh, sorry, 1, uh, 0, 0, 1. I will have here minus 1, uh, 0, 0, minus 1. I will have, have here minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And I will have at the end 1, 0, 0, 1. And that's my 8 by 8 matrix for the stage 1. So now let's write the matrix for the stage 2. Uh, for stage 2, uh, I have to multi I have to make tensor product of uh, R uh, 90 degree uh, with C naught. That means I have to compute tensor product of uh, uh, 1, uh, sorry, 0, minus 1, uh, 1, 0 because cos 90 is 0, uh, sin 90, minus sin 90 is minus 1. Uh, sin 90 is 1 and cos 90 is 0. Uh, tensor product with C naught and C naught gate is uh, similar to identity but some differences. So it's like 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 and last two columns are swapped. So we have here 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 0, 1, 0. That's it. So this is very easy matrix to write because in place of this 0, I will write 4 by 4 0 matrix. In place of this one, I will write matrix which will be C node but in place instead of 1 I will have minus 1. In place of this 1 I will write C node matrix. In place of 0 I will write 4 by 4 0 matrix. So we can quickly write this matrix. So my matrix for stage 2 will be first for this one I will have 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 all zeros in C naught matrix 0 0 0 0 and to avoid error, I'm going to make some invisible brackets here that no one can see but me. And now for this minus 1, I'm going to write C naught matrix but with minus 1 in place of 1. So I'm going to have here 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 0. And in case of this one, in place of this one, I will write C naught matrix as it is. So here I will have uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 1, 0. Some invisible stuff also. And then uh, here I will once again write 4 by 4, 0 matrix because of this 0. So I will have here 0, 0, 0, 0. Maybe should use some different color. So I will have here 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0. And I'm done with my uh, matrix for uh, stage 2. So now I have to write matrix for stage 3. For stage 3 matrix, I have to uh, do tensor product of poly x with identity and with uh, poly z. And poly x gate is uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. And identity matrix is like 1, 0, uh, 0, 1. And poly z gate is also very similar to identity gate. It's like uh, 1, 0, 0, minus 1. 
so now I can I quickly compute their tensor products. So first I am going to compute tensor product of uh, first two gates or first two matrices. Uh, so in place of 0 I will write uh, 2 by 2 0. In place of 1 I will write this whole matrix. In place of 1 I will write this whole matrix. In place of 0 I will, I will write 2 by 2 0 matrix. And then I will have tensor product of uh, these two matrices. So in place of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 some invisible stuff so that I will not make any mistake. In place of 1, I will have this matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. In place of 1, I will have this matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. In place of 0, I will have null matrix 0, 0, 0, 0. And I am done with tensor product of these two gates. So now I have to compute tensor product of uh, this matrix and with matrix 1, 0, uh, 0, minus 1. So once again, in place of 0, I will write null matrix of 2 by 2. In place of 1, I will write this matrix. And then I will have uh, my tensor product ready. So for stage, uh, stage 3, my answer is going to be, first I have 0 here, so I have 0, 0, 0, 0. 2 by 2 0 and the time 2 by 2 0 0 0 0 0 and then 1 for 1 I have 1 0 0 minus 1 and for 0 I have uh, 0 0 0 0 for 0 I have 0 0 0 0 for 0 I have 0 0 0 0 for 0 and for 1 And for 1, for 0, these brackets are invisible, uh, they, they don't exist. And for this row, So now I have my matrix of each stage including stage 3 and in order to compute unity matrix of the whole circuit, uh, multiply S3 with S2 and then I will multiply my result with S1. I can, I can uh, put brackets anywhere so I can also multiply S2 and S1 first but the order of multiplication must remain the same. So I can put brackets anywhere, I can also multiply S3 and S2 first and then the result can be multiplied with S1. Uh, both will produce the same answer. So let me do the multiplication quickly. After multiplying S3 with S2 and S1, I have achieved this matrix. And this matrix is unitary matrix for the whole circuit. So we can use this matrix instead of that circuit and result must be same. In part D, we are asked to find unitary matrix which is for the reverse circuit. Uh, unitary matrix for the reverse circuit will be transpose conjugate, conjugate transpose of this matrix. And I am not going to compute that because um, I think you can do that yourself. And uh, the last part says that compute the output uh, of this circuit using this unitary matrix which is very straightforward. Uh, we have to uh, put the input on the right hand side. So our input is uh, equals to uh, cat 0, cat 1 and cat 0 and it implies that I have 1 at 2 location and rest of the locations are 0. So I have this location 0, location 1, location 2 has 1 and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now I multiply this matrix uh, with uh, this vector and my answer should be same as was the answer of part B. And 
uh, this implies that my answer will be third column so, because uh, on the third row here I have one so my answer will be this column so my answer is going to be 1 over 2 and uh, 1 0 0 1 minus 1 uh, 0 uh, 0 minus 1 and uh, we can match my answer with the answer that we have got in part B and both are same because uh, part B answer is telling me that I must have 1 at location 0 I have 1 there I should I should have 1 at location 3rd I have 1 at location 3rd and it says I should have minus 1 at location 4th and I have minus 1 at location 4th and it's saying I should have uh, minus 1 at location 7 and I have minus 1 at location 7 so my answer of part B and uh, part E is same it also proves that my unitary matrix is correct. So that is it for this lecture. See you next time.